So uh, what are you thinking? I would be in a severe disadvantage if we did something involving throwing. Maybe we can go offhand, where I go left hand, you go to make it fair. Because I don't think that makes it fair. You have to be somewhat reasonable. I'm not going to do anything besides a game of throwing. I'm, I'm not only comfortable do playing a game of throwing. Game of chance. I'm not going to agree to a game of chance. You want to forfeit I, the game. You're the one unwilling to compromise. Yeah, I, it, I can't argue with a brick wall at this point. You're being the brick wall. You have eight minutes. Yep, yeah, it's going to be a long eight minutes. <laughs> Man, that was a painful one to watch. Was there a more polarizing elimination in Squid Game The Challenge? Unfair, frustrating, heartbreaking, infuriating. This is how some fans describe the infamous double elimination marble suicide pact. Is there a word for the opposite of Ganbu? How the hell did these two even pair up? I had to rewatch the whole series because I didn't even remember hearing from either one of them before marbles. Neither got a lot of screen time, and we barely heard them talk, so there wasn't much to go on that would lead people to root or not root for them. They seemed to be both mild-mannered and mostly blended into the background, and when we did see them, it was usually because they were adjacent to a main character. Answer. What if I answer the phone and they're like, okay, we have a deep dish pizza back here just for you if you eliminate one person? I wouldn't blame you. Two days of eliminations like this? Yeah. I think this is the worst way to go. From the outside, I feel like you guys might look like an alliance, maybe a little bit. Damn. Oh, bro. That's a power move. Oh! Yeah. oh squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Though it didn't appear that either one of them was in an alliance or clique. So why did so many people have such strong emotions about it? There were supporters on both sides, but it's clear that most people on Reddit and social media, and even writers, were on the side of Aurora, number 399. And while both sides got plenty of online hate, Dylan, number 65, seemed to get the worst of it by far. He was branded by many as the villain, entitled white guy, gaslighter, microaggressive, sexist, racist, a male Karen. But was it warranted? I suspect that if both players were the same gender and race, we would not have seen such polarizing opinions and strong emotions. So to try to keep this as objective and unemotional as possible, I'm just going to refer to them by their numbers during my analysis to focus on what they actually said and did, and will give my final verdict at the end to answer these questions. Were they both equally at fault for being so stubborn? Was one person more to blame? Did either of them have a better case for winning the tiebreaker? Let's get into it. As a reward, the whole dorm will now receive a treat. The treat is a picnic. Unlike most of the other pairs, these two were not friends, and it wasn't even clear if they talked to each other before the picnic. They linked up, ironically, because they were afraid of being left out without a partner and being eliminated. By the way, how did none of these players see the marbles bait and switch coming? In the Korean original show, Marbles was next, and they were tricked into pairing up. We're at 63 people. There's going to be one odd man out. Anyone want to pair up? Oh, don't do it, man. You need to pair? Don't. Seriously, don't. And so I, you know, decided to go with Aurora because she's the closest person around me. Angel, 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 and girl, I'm telling you, don't do it. I'd rather be partners with you than be the one person out. Okay. You're making a big mistake, man. A big mistake. Or maybe the Aussie surfer dude figured it out because he seemed to remember what happened to the odd person out. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> remember, she's a witch and dangerous. In any case, we saw that the duo almost immediately got off on the wrong foot. So, uh, what are you thinking? I would be in a severe disadvantage if we did something involving throwing because I'm not good at it. Not good at it, okay? And. I wanted to propose a strategy game. No, because we all know how the strategy games work. How do they work? We can maybe agree on something in the middle ground that's like more up to chance. Here's my thing. I don't want to go home and say it was because I got unlucky. Maybe we can go offhand, where I go left hand. You use your left hand or your right hand for that? To keep it as somewhat of a skill to make it fair. Tell you what's fair or what's not. Because I don't think that makes it fair, dude. How? That, how? that makes no sense. You have to be somewhat reasonable. Be reasonable. You're threatening our lives. You see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Fuck 
is ticking. Just two days earlier, they both saw what happened when people refused to budge. They saw eight players eliminated when they couldn't agree on their cookie shapes. But in Dalgona, it was more understandable because whoever picked the umbrella was at a huge disadvantage and would likely be signing their death warrant. Also, they had a whole line of people counting on them. The clock is ticking. You can pick the game, but I really don't want to do a, a game of throwing. I'm not going to do anything besides a game of throwing. And I guess we're both in quite a similar position. I'm sure we can come to some kind of compromise. And only going to do a game of throwing. Yep. I'll, go, I'll go any game of throwing you want that involves more than one marble. Nothing short of compromise. Never compromise. I'm not comfortable gonna playing a game of throwing. You don't have to raise your voice. It's fine. I'm not raising my voice. It's okay. Do not raise your voice at me. Don't you raise your voice at him. Don't you ever raise your voice at me. I thought you were a competitor. I am a competitor. That's why I'm Clearly not going to hold. Clearly not. You're a competitor with a big ego. Why are you being so stubborn? I'm giving myself a chance to win, as you should. If you are not so stubborn, you would make a great queen. Terribly sorry. I'm afraid he's ever so stubborn about these sort of things. I would make a great queen because I am so stubborn. The clock is ticking, John. I would rather go off on a game of chance. I'm not going to agree to a game of chance. You want to forfeit the game. You're the one unwilling to compromise. Compromise? Will you risk it all? No compromise. What do you mean? I proposed so many compromises. You're the one who's sitting here like this. I'm not going to fall into your trap. It's a trap! It's not I'm a done trap. To... What if it's a trap? Turn around. And do not come back. It's, I can't argue with a brick wall at this point. You're being the brick wall. And I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm trying to compromise. Why can't you compromise on this? Well, there's no sense in us both going down. We have eight minutes. It's going to be a long eight minutes. <sighs> and the clock is ticking. I need your help. The clock is ticking, my man. I don't want to go home because I took a hole in the ground. You're going to go home because you didn't. Don't tell him! Dial dug a hole. Come on, guys! The clock is ticking! What's it going to be? All right, you win. I'll play a game. We have two marbles, and I guess the closest thing to putting it in that, yeah, does that feel equal to you? All right. Move, hurry up. Go, please. <sighs> you both suck. Thank God. Five seconds. That's one. All right, tied. Shoot, 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 shoot. Five. Your time is up. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Attention players, the game is now over. Time's up. Time's up. Yeah. We have to decide who won or we're both gonna get eliminated. How else we solve this? I was the first to make it in. You know, okay. Gosh darn it, I give up. It's yours, you can have it. I'm not doing that. Absolutely not. Dylan! Dylan, please. <laughs> I believe it's time I... to go. Dylan, please, it's time to go, now. You agreed to, for us to take shot, we both, we took the same amount of shots and made the same amount. Dylan, please, your voice is angry. But I was the first one to make it in. And I, and I let you go first. Dude, come on. Don't, Dylan. Please. I, I feel like I have to see this. The time is up. Sorry, time's up. The time is up. I think it's fair if I, if I win after this. No. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! I absolutely disagree. Absolutely. We have to make a decision or we're both eliminated. What? This is a suicide pact. I'm not, I'm not just going to give you the win. You're so stubborn. She's so stubborn. Player 65 and 399. Eliminated. There was a lot that we did not see that was left on the editing floor, and both 399 and 65 have claimed that they wished that the entire unedited video could be shown to boost their respective cases. I've read a lot of comments on Reddit and social media, and I'm going to summarize the main points that the commenters have made in favor and against both of them. Let's start with the arguments in favor of 399. First, 399 suggested some different compromises a game of strategy, a game of chance, and then finally conceded to a throwing game at the end. So while they were both stubborn, she was the one that was more willing to compromise by far. 
We didn't see exactly what games she proposed, but I'd have to assume that Odd Even came up since it was the only non-throwing game that they showed in the original series. Even. To me, that would have been a reasonable alternative since it gave neither an uh, advantage or disadvantage to either one of them. A throwing game gave 65 an advantage, while a strategy game gave 399 an advantage. I suspect 65 refused a strategy game because he knew he would be at a disadvantage if he was playing a new game for the first time that she proposed, plus he may have known that 399 was a smart management consultant and good at games that involve strategy and critical thinking. And what about 65's argument that he did not want to be eliminated because of chance or dumb luck? I don't want to go home and say it was because I got unlucky. Isn't Squid Game part skill and part dumb luck? What skill was involved for all the players who happened to stand in the umbrella line? What skills did he use to survive warships? The jack-in-the-boxes? What skill did TJ fail to use to end up with the number one jersey? What about the dice game? the three-button machine. Playing odd-even seemed like a perfectly reasonable compromise. Neither had an advantage, and they both had even odds. At least it gave them both a chance for someone to win instead of a guaranteed double elimination. And what about the tiebreaker? 399 thought that she should win because 65 threw first, but she was the first to make it in. In one of her TikToks, she also accused 65 of cheating because he threw with his right hand and she didn't notice. Case closed, right? Well, not so fast. Let's build the case for number 65 as well. The strongest case in favor of 65 was that 399 refused to play any kind of throwing game when marbles is predominantly a throwing game. It would be as if a player refused to play red light, green light because they were old and had bad knees. Bend your knees. Bend the useful knee that you have. Sorry, you gotta come up with something else because it puts me at a disadvantage. Nope, I'm bad at cutting out shapes and cookies, so let's do something else. Sorry, I'm slightly autistic and can't read emotions, so I can't do Circle of Trust. Literally, everyone else played a throwing game, even though some were probably better than others. Trey's mom was a former college basketball player who had excellent hand-eye coordination, but he still played a throwing game. Also, in her TikTok, 399 said that she had trained for three months. Presumably, she watched the original series and should have known to practice some marbles throwing instead of just working out. Unless her whole strategy was to refuse any throwing games and hope her opponent would just agree. If the default option was a throwing game, then isn't she the first one to stubbornly refuse one option over another? The second biggest argument in favor for 65 was that he offered to play left-handed, we can go offhand, where I go left-hand, you go, which would have evened up the odds considerably. He also offered to play marble. any throwing game that she chose, as long as it involved more than one marble, so 399 could have picked a super easy game, like tossing into a jar two feet away while also making 65 play with his left hand. 65 took a lot of heat for being stubborn and never giving an inch. But Spencer took all kinds of heat and was accused of folding and not holding his ground when he was trying to prevent the four of them from being eliminated. So why did 65 get so much flack for risking them both getting knocked out because he held his ground? I suspect that he got so much hate mainly because of his tone and the infamous you don't have to raise your voice, it's fine comment, which triggered a lot of negative comments and probably immediately made him the villain in the eyes of many. 65 eventually posted a TikTok video giving his side of the story and said that the show edited out what they both said right before he made the don't raise your voice comment. I'm not comfortable playing a game of throwing. You don't have to raise your voice, it's fine. I'm not raising my voice. It's okay. He asked Netflix to review the entire footage and to detail exactly what went down. Of course, we're only getting his version of what they supposedly told him. He claimed that they both started to get heated and both raised their voices, but they didn't show the parts where 399 actually raised her voice and the final edit made him look like a dickhead. 399 seemed to acknowledge this. She also posted a similar TikTok explaining her side of the story early on and also agreed that the show edited their interaction for dramatic effect to make him look like a sore loser and said that she wished that they had aired it all more accurately and also asked people to stop sending him hate and flaming him online and also that she had gotten all kinds of terrible and racist comments. Her TikTok also explained that she refused 65's left hand offer because she didn't know which was really his dominant hand and maybe he was ambidextrous and plus she had bad hand-eye coordination. 
Regarding 399's accusation of right-hand cheating, 65 responded by saying that he offered to use his left hand in the early negotiation, but since she refused, it was off the table. And at the end, they only agreed on tossing into a jar. He also said that she could be considered a cheater too because they agreed to throw from their positions leaning on the ledge, but 399 can be seen leaning forward while throwing. In other words, during marbles, a game for kids, they ended up bickering exactly like little kids. You're both little children. They both also explained that they tried to play rock, paper, scissors as a tiebreaker, but weren't allowed to because it had to be something involving marbles. By the way, during the Dalgona negotiations, the players were told the same thing, that they could not play rock, paper, scissors or anything similar to decide the shapes. So should 399 be declared the winner because she made the first marble and 65 was the first to throw? In his TikTok, 65 also claimed that the unedited footage showed him asking 399 if she wanted to go first, but she instead told him to go. 65 made the reasonable argument that they both took the same number of throws and both had the same number of marbles go in, so he had just as much claim to win as his opponent. In the final analysis, neither had a clear-cut case for winning and I can understand why they both stood their ground. Their friends and family were all watching. They would forever have to live with people saying, I can't believe you just folded and took the L. In fact, 65 even mentioned that he did not want to just fold because he has two younger siblings. What example would he be setting for them if he just gave up in a tie ball situation and let someone take the win? Actually, this is a possible clue that helps explain how this played out as a double elimination. I also noticed that 399 was the oldest child. Does that tell us anything? Is it possible that since they both grew up as the oldest sibling, they were both used to getting their way and making their younger brothers and sisters bend to their wills? So when I add it all up, what's my personal assessment? Were they equally to blame or was one player more to blame than the other? I don't know what's fair. A little both actually. I feel that they both shouldered an almost equal amount of blame. One wanted to do only a throwing game, and one wanted to do anything but a throwing game. They both stubbornly held their ground while the clock ticked down. By the time 399 conceded to a throwing game, they did not have enough time to clearly detail the rules and have enough time to play it out. And according to their rules for winning, neither one of them had a good claim for winning the tiebreaker. But I don't think the blame was shared evenly exactly. In my view, 399 suggested a game of chance, which seemed like a fair compromise to me. 65 must have had his reasons for not wanting to be knocked out because of pure luck, but isn't a 50-50 chance better than a guaranteed double elimination? Also, 399 was the one to concede at the end by finally agreeing to a throwing game, so 65 was slightly more to blame in my opinion. But again, none of us saw the entire unedited footage, so it's impossible to say anything for sure. So it's a good thing that we have an independent party to objectively review and adjudicate on the matter. That's right, we can finally see the independent adjudicators in action. In his TikTok, 65 explained that when they could not agree on a tiebreaker winner, the adjudicators told them to sit tight and they spent about 30 to 40 minutes reviewing exactly what was said and done. Five of the adjudicators came back to them and explained that, according to the rules that they defined, there was not enough clarity to declare one winner over the other, so they were both out. In the end, an argument can be made for either side, based on our limited view, but I don't think that anyone can objectively say that it was a clear win for one player, or that one was much more unreasonable and terrible than the other. The adjudicators made the right call, in my opinion. Is there anything that we can take away from all this? To me, the Squid Game is kind of like a 10-episode Rorschach test. What was a Rorschach test? Well, that's a Rorschach, Mr. Wayne. Who we root for and how we interpret things depends on our frames of references and different life experience and personality leanings. For example, the comments in my videos about Ashley and Mai were really eye-opening to me. I didn't even include any voiceover comments. I just showed what the players actually did and said and assumed it was obvious who was in the right and who was in the wrong but many people came to the exact opposite conclusions. While most people agreed with me that Ashley was being hypocritical and not a team player and deserved to be eliminated, a surprising number of people thought that she did nothing wrong and that Mai was a villain who was acting terrible instead. Isn't it human nature to start rooting for certain people over others? 
But of course, the problem is, as soon as we identify with them, we start seeing them with rose-colored glasses and tend to rationalize and excuse their behavior and see others that are against them as the enemy. And then everything is perceived through that slightly skewed lens. So in the end, I can't say anything too confidently, and I'm sure plenty of you disagree with what I've said. Feel free to sound off in the comments. If there's anything that we can all agree on, it's that Netflix should release all of the unedited footage, but mostly so that we can see those two picnicking together while making awkward small talk. Mister, please! <laughs> please, sir, please! I'm not doing that. Absolutely not. Dylan!